shall we stand this morning in the presence of God? I tell you, his presence is already here. Can we just offer up to, to the Lord a praise offering this morning? All over the building, let's just give God a praise offering. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning we're saying, God, set a fire down in my soul. Set a fire that I can't put out. Set a fire that we can't control. And that fire is the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of you know what the Holy Ghost is? The Holy Ghost is that keeping power. It's what keeps us day by day. I tell you what, I need God's presence, don't you? Hallelujah. Oh, set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain, I can't control, cause I want more of you, God. Oh. 
says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall securely be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Let's just praise him today. Every praise is to our God. Oh, yes. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our to 
God. Every praise is due our God. set a fire down in my soul and that's the fire of the Holy Ghost the yes, fire yes. of the Holy Spirit but you know what we can only possess that as we spend time with God Hallelujah. as we spend time in God's presence how many of you want more of the presence of God in your life more of the presence more of the power of God in your life we need that every 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 day every moment of the day we need that in our lives who is like the Lord in all the earth God there there's no one like you there's no one like you I've searched and there's no one greater than my God Jesus Christ can I get a witness this morning can I get a witness this morning yes 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 Bridget is gonna sing about the presence of God this morning Who is like the Lord in all the earth? Yes. Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. For nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup.
just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord.
Yeah. 
for God's will to be manifested. Jesus. 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 we're going to go to the Lord in prayer whatever you need from God today I want you to lift your hands to him believing that by faith whatever your prayer need is that your God will hear your cry he's a faithful and just God his glory and his presence are abiding with us right now. As you move into his presence in this prayer, take whatever you need to that altar, amen, and leave it there. Claiming the victory by faith that God will do the miraculous in your life today. Lord, we come to you today. Lord, as we lift up your name in prayer, we do lift up the family of Harold Shaw. For Harold has transitioned to be at home with you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now that in the midst of this house today, Lord, someone needs a touch from you. Lord, as we move into your presence, Lord, as our hearts have poured out with everything we have within us, Lord, we earnestly stand before you, petitioning in our hearts to say, Lord, have your way in the midst of our lives. Not my will, let thy will be done. We thank you for the victory right now. Lord, we claim strength, we claim freedom, we claim deliverance, we claim your anointing to fall down in the midst of our lives. Lord, while we're praying today, protect our children, even as they go into our schools, as they ride on their buses. Lord, watch over our teachers and our administrators for, Lord, the enemy is busy, but your hand is greater. Your glory is greater. You're much more powerful. Your anointing is stronger to break the yoke. We thank you right now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we'll see the glory of God manifested in and through Christ Jesus. We'll stand on the word of God, believing that it's true. And your glory shall fill this place. Your glory shall fill our temples. Your peace shall reign in our
Jesus. 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 Your presence is here right now. Hallelujah. Your presence is here. Reach out and touch him right now. Hallelujah. Your glory Jesus. Your glory. Your power. Your healing is here right now. Your anointing. Your, your strength. is here right now. Hallelujah. You're here right now, oh God. Your glory fills this house. Your glory fills this house. Just worship. when the presence of God enters into the sanctuary when you move into that presence family were changed to the point that you're never the same again God does a work on our hearts and we're catapulted into a new place when we sang in that song about moving beyond the veil it means I'm moving to that place where that veil has been rent and God is able to move in my life beyond what I could ever have accomplished on our own. Give God some praise one more time. Praise him like when he brought you through. When you needed a prayer answered and God answered that prayer, that's the kind of praise. That's the kind of praise. In Jesus' name. Hit somebody's hand and tell them, I sense the presence of God in this place right now. Tell that other person there's an anointing in this house today hallelujah 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 Go ahead and worship him just a little bit more, it's all right.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, it's just coming to the house ready. Amen. Ready to receive whatever God has with a willing heart to do whatever God's will and purpose is. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God today. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to see each and every one of you. For those that are here today, we, uh, this is our t-shirts and, 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 uh, um, what is it? T-shirts and uh, tennis shoes. Come on now. I know I'm trying to get there. I'm still trying to fight my way out of worship. This is the first time I have ever worn tennis shoes on a Sunday morning. Amen? I feel liberated. Come on now. Anybody else? Is this your first time ever wearing tennis shoes on a Sunday morning? Y'all just wear them all the time here. Amen? We love that freedom, amen. It's a blessing. I love that, 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 that concept. I have to do this again, amen. I'm enjoying myself. And you know, it's good when your feet feel comfortable. Come on now. Somebody can stand a little longer and worship. Come on now. Trying to squeeze into some cute shoes. Come on now. Do we have any first time guests that are here with us today? Any first time guests? Please raise your hand. Where's my first time guest at? Give them some love. All around the sanctuary. Oh, we could give them a little bit more love than that. They showed up today. Hey, Amen. You can put your hands down. Hey, Amen. Some of them look like they had a testimony waiting. Come on now. We're so glad that you decided to come and join us here on our wonderful T-shirts and tennis shoes. TNT. Come on now. Sunday. Amen. We'll have more of these. Amen. I'm into this. All right. Now I feel it. Come on now. We're glad that you're here at the end of our service through these double doors to your left. We have a visitor's reception area. We have some wonderful refreshments we'd love to bless you with and any questions that you have about our church or the gift we'd love to give you. So make sure I'll make my way over there quickly to say hello to you when we get done with our service. But we're glad that you decided to come and worship with us here at Sheffield today. Amen. Our ushers are assembled all around our sanctuary. They have debit envelopes in their possession. Anybody in the house that would like to give by means of your debit card, please raise your hand. You can give by any means that you like later in our service. Check, cash, whatever God has blessed you with to come into the house today. But if you'd like to give by debit, please raise your hands and they'll assist you in an expeditious fashion. Amen? Amen. If we turn our attention to our video screens, our announcements will be beginning. Amen. SFLC Kids is back with bright colored shirts and jackets to represent your church. Choose from neon green, orange, hot pink, blue, purple, or white. Only $15 each and your purchase goes directly towards changing the world for children right here at Sheffield and in the community. Find us in the West Lobby after both services today. The Married Enrichment Ministry is hosting a Valentine Banquet Getaway on Friday, February 14, 2014 at the Embassy Suites Hotel. Stop in the lobby and get information and make your first deposit today. Secure your date with your mate. The Worship and Fine Arts Ministry is in need of experienced lighting technicians to serve in this growing and innovative ministry. If you have experience in the area of stage lighting and you are not yet serving in a ministry, please contact Pastor Nicole Hill's office for more information. Operation Love's Outreach serves the Northeast community through a grocery distribution the first Saturday of every month. If you would like to be a part of blessing our community through this awesome ministry, please meet us in the Youth Center Gym on Saturday, September 7th at 7.15 a.m. For more information, contact Yoli at the church office. Feed the People Cafe will be serving lunch next Sunday, September 1st, right after the 11 a.m. service in the Youth Center Gym. The menu is a barbecued sandwich or hot dogs for the kids, barbecued baked beans, corn on the cob, garden salad, dessert, and southern flavored sweet tea. 
Be sure to join us for a delicious meal, great fellowship, and toe-tapping gospel music. Jesus. We have missionaries we help all over the world. And there are brothers and sisters right here in this church that have great ministries outside this church. So we designated September as Missions Month, so everyone will know about these great ministries. And we're having a missions banquet September 13th. Yes, with African food. And Asian food. And Mexican food. And Italian food. And American food. I can't wait. We want everyone to be involved. And we want to do our part to fulfill the Great Commission. Yes, we want to continue to do our part to fulfill the Great Commission. God has blessed Sheffield because in many years we've been a strong missionary church. We have missionaries all over the world and then our own people that have ministries outside of this church. So during the month of September, which is Mission Month, we're going to be featuring one of these missionaries every Sunday with a short video and also a dollar offering for that ministry. In addition to that, we're having a great fun-filled missions banquet on Friday night, September the 13th. It's informal with African, Asian, Italian, Mexican, and American food. I can't wait to try some soul food. And then we're having a very special speaker, Hal Donaldson, the director of Convoy of Hope, who works in crisis situations all over the world, and he's going to be speaking. Now, we need your help in preparing the food. If you know how to prepare some of this ethnic food, there are tables in the lobby to sign up to say you will help with the missions banquet. Now, the tickets are $10, and all the money goes to missions, and we only have 350 tickets. So get yours as soon as possible. Again, September is Missionary Month for our worldwide ministry that's conducted by Sheffield Family Life Center. Okay, Sheffield. Now that we got the business taken care of, it's time for the fun to start. As soon as the Missions Festival is over, the youth ministry is taking over the event and we're throwing you an after party. The after party is going to have games, giveaways, possibly some performances, and dessert. You don't want to miss this. After the festival is over, stick around. we got an after party planned just for you and the Impact Youth Ministry is taking it over. I'll see you there. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? We got some good things going on. What a blessing. Amen? Amen. Our missions banquet is fast approaching, as we saw on our wonderful video. There's only uh, a few tickets, 300 or so left, so you got to get yours today in the lobby. Uh, you also have an opportunity to be a blessing by sharing those ethnic dishes. Amen? So let's make sure we get connected. Family, you know, missions can change your life. Amen? Anybody ever been on a missions trip in the house? Amen. The blessing of those that function in missions is unbelievable. And for us to be able to stand in the gap and be able to bless them, then it's outstanding. Amen. And uh, there's a, a wonderful opportunity that we have. And there's some, some other things that we want to share with this. Um, also, in, in this process of, uh, of going and sharing and, and, and together, there's a lot of giveaways that we have. Amen. I'm talking about some major giveaways. You hear me, family? Um, Samsung tablet. Some Dr. Dre headsets, come on now. $100 Walmart gift card, camera with Wi-Fi, Jack Stack gift card, come on now, AMC gift card. The movies are expensive, can I get an amen in the house? Uh, you know, dinner for two at the steakhouse, come on now. We got a lot of good stuff going on and they got an after party, come on now. Come on and celebrate, hey. I jump over there for a second if it's for the youth now. I can, I can dance for a minute, somebody. <laughs> and flow with them. The blessing is we got a dynamic thing coming up. Family, if you have never seen missions and seen the opportunity to bless, this is an opportunity to bless someone. Amen. Tickets are only $10, so make sure we get connected and, and support our missions. Amen. Let's get an amen in the house and a clap. All right. Life Dynamic Ministry is, co is hosting the Titus 2 and 4 Wives Conference, October 25th and 26th. Early Bird Conference fees $20 until September 20th. Then the tickets will go up to, to $25. Tickets for this conference are being sold right in our resource center. Amen. For more information about this or to get a flyer, you can ask and call our church and ask for Sister Mary. Amen. The marriage en enrichment class is going to the Starlight Theater to see Miss Saigon Saturday, September 7th at 7 p.m. If you'd like to be a part of this event, Stop by and sign up at our marriage enrichment table that's in our West Lobby. Amen. 
Lincoln University plays host to Grambling State University at Arrowhead Stadium September 14th at 4.30 p.m. Somebody shout it out there. I hear you. The Missouri Classic is coming right here to Arrowhead Stadium. Amen. Tickets are, are half price now on sale at our Resource Center. Don't miss the Battle of the Bands halftime show. Get your tickets today, and we shall be tailgating about an hour or so earlier. Amen. And so let's share together and have some fun, family. We want to make everybody aware of the fact that water baptism is today immediately following this 11 a.m. service in our Gene Westlake Chapel. People are showing their outward confession of faith. Amen. If you'd like to go over to our Gene Westlake Chapel and support right after this service, you can do so. Amen. It's time to get our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I like to say, the author and finisher of my faith. I love Jesus. That is my guy. Come on now. Because I know he first loved me. Oh, Jesus. And if he loves me like that, and I realize how much God has blessed me in my life and you in your life, and I realize that in this process of giving him my first fruit, which is 10%, he allows me to keep how much? Oh, I don't think everybody did their math and told me like I needed to hear it. We get to keep, we get to keep how much? Is it that hard to give God 10 if I know I get to keep? I'm trying to flow with you now. You know, the blessings that God gives out of obedience to do what his word says, family, is, is just, it's just, it's hard to put into to words, amen? It's hard to quantify how God has blessed us. And all you have to do, family, is look back from whence you come. Amen? Anybody ever waited on God to move and then you saw God do something miraculous in your life? 10% don't mean that much no more. Come on now. Because in my prayer, if I don't even understand it, I say, Lord, you allow me to keep 90. Let me give you your 10 that you've ordained me to give you out of your word. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Lord, we thank you right now. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for this day that, Lord, we've decided to come and serve you and worship you. And, Lord, in this greatest opportunity to worship, let us uh, examine our own hearts as we give to give faithfully unto you, not just today, but consistently in our lives. Let your blessings continue to pour out to your people. We bless this time and this offering in Jesus' mighty name. We pray the body of Christ said together. Amen. Amen.
So there may be something to this whole putting it all in his hands thing. That's the only way it really prospers. Because uh, you have an enemy, the devil. How many of you are aware of the devil? Uh, the devil is a liar. The devil will tell you you can't when you can. The devil will tell you you won't when you will. The devil will tell you you shouldn't, and there's no way it can happen for you when it actually can. And the way you get beyond that is by putting it all in his hands. Putting it all in his hands. Put it all in his hands. In his hands. In his hands. In his hands. I put it all in his hands. This, all, uh, you know, put it all in his hands. We were close. We were close. That was real close. I was starting to feel it a little bit, but it's a little bit, a little bit. But it's like, no, no, pull it back in. Pull it back in, white boy. Mm-mm. Sorry for my racial slur. It's, it's, it's just intense up here. It, when, when you have that kind of, when you have that kind of, when you have that kind of presence, and it's that kind of a truth, because it's not the song, it's the truth behind it. It's the truth behind it. And so we live it. I have to live that, you have to live that. And it's that truth that really brings that passion. As you begin to feel the liberating power of God when you, when you let yourself respond to what's being said and what's being sung. Today is T-shirt and tennis shoes, tennis shoes days, and I had, a, I had a really flashy outfit picked out, and God said, no, nah, it's not about you. Put on something really boring. <laughs> so I couldn't even wear nice shoes. God will not let me get away from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And uh, you, ever, you, ever just get, you ever just get spanked real hard by God? Spanked? The kind of spanking where you have to just bend over and, and you want to put your hands back there? Ho, oh, oh. ho. But you know you're going to get more of it if you do? How many of you used to get those spankings, you, spankings when you were a kid? And you'd, and you'd be putting that hand back there. Oh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Every time you, and, and then your parents end up saying, every time you do that, I'm going to give you another one. My dad, this little man that sits down here, and he's so sweet, <laughs> used to beat the life out of me. And my mom, my little mom, you know her deal. She, she would light me up like a Christmas tree. She turned into Inspector Gadget no matter where she was in the room. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 17. And when God hits you, he hits you hard. And God hit me hard this week. I've been preaching, you know, I've been preaching faith. And I don't know how many of you were here two weeks ago when we, I preached on the going into the valley, be the one, be the one to go in the valley. How many of you said that day you wanted to be the one? Well, I said it, and then God said it back to me this week. So you wanted to be the one. I'm going to give you your chance. I really don't. I'd rather preach my message than live it. But for some reason, God makes me, makes me live it. After I preach it, it's coming at me. So this is going to be a rough week, I can tell you already, because I've got something to share with you today. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 31, David had approached, he, he, we'd gone through this story the last, the last two Sundays, David heard Goliath, he was willing to go fight, he said, hey, we can, I can take this guy. David's questions about fighting Goliath were reported to King Saul. The king sent for David, and this is how that went. David went to King Saul, 
David is a boy, probably a 15-year-old boy at this point, went to King Saul, who's the king, a mighty warrior, said, don't worry about this giant, I'll go fight him. I'll go fight him. Don't worry about this giant. We get so stressed and worried about the giants in our life, we're, we forget that we have the power to overcome them. We look so much at the giant, we forget to look beyond the giant to God, the God, to God behind the giant who is much bigger than the giant. We all have giants in our life. Maybe yours today is physical. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's a, a sin addiction that you can't shake. Maybe it's something in your family, something in your past, in your present, something that's robbing your future. We all have giants in our lives. Everybody. And we tend to look at the giant and say, I can't. I can't. I can't. And then the voice of the enemy says, no, you can't. And not only can't you, you won't. David had the right attitude. King, don't worry about this giant. I'll go fight him. King Saul said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since he was a boy. But David persisted. I'm taking care of my father's sheep and goats. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club. I rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears, and I will do it to this ungodly Philistine. For he has defiled the armies of the living God, and he has defiled God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also rescue me from this giant. Saul finally consented, all right, after great discussion, all right, and may the Lord be with you. And it's fair to point out that Saul also said, here's my armor because it's only the only thing I can do to help you. He supported him in killing that giant, even though he was not willing to live that himself. Now, how many of you have ever put a resume together for anything? You put a resume together at some point. Most of us. A resume will have your education, your qualifications, your experience, pertinent information, and references on it. David had the resume of a shepherd, yet God called him to fight a giant. His resume said he's a shepherd. All he's ever done is watch sheep and goats for his dad in the pasture. Yeah, he's killed some animals. He's defended the sheep. But his resume says he's a shepherd. Now, King Saul's resume looked more like that of a giant killer, a warrior, the best among men, the biggest among men. He was, a, he was a warrior. He was a giant killer. David surely was a shepherd. If you were to stand the two side by side and say, which one will kill this giant, 99 out of 100 people will say the guy in the armor that's 6'6", six, six, as opposed to the guy who's 5'5", five, five, with, a, with, a, with a smooth face. It's not going to happen. David had the resume of a shepherd. We don't typically have the qualifications for what God calls us to do. We can't even live the life. We struggle to live an everyday Christian life. Let's have an honest moment. And if it's not you, don't raise your hand. But how many of you, we'll call it day to day, struggle with temptation and potential sin? There are a few who don't, but most of us do. And we are people who are trying to be godly. You look around this room, and, and it's a room full of people who are trying to pursue God. We're trying to live for God. We're trying to bring honor to God. We're trying to live the life that he's called us to live, and we struggle to do that. We don't even have, we don't even have the training to do that. We don't even have the qualifications to do that. And God will never let us just simply follow without calling us to something further. God always calls us to something more than just casual following. Now, we can fall back into casual following, but there's not great reward there. And you think, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. It was wonderful to see all the people in the choir this morning. What a great sight that was. That was awesome. 
And you know what? That's a choir loft full of people who have said, okay, God, I'll take the time. I'll put forth the effort to do something extra for you. There is probably, now I don't know this for a fact, but there are probably a couple people in the choir who are not great singers by themselves. A couple. Some of them are even raising their hand now. <laughs> that would be me. You just try to latch on to the person next to you and sing what they're doing. Uh -huh. But people have said, you know what, I don't have the qualification, but I want to worship the Lord like that. I want to give myself to worship unto God. And let me tell you, choir, it's inspiring to see that many of you up there leading us in worship. That's incredible. That's incredible when most churches have done away with choirs because they can't get people to participate. What an amazing thing. We had, a, we had an entire group of people leading us in worship today. I, I love that. I love the choir. I love the choir. Faith comes in when we do, we accept the challenge to do what we're not qualified to do. When God challenges us to be what we're not qualified to be. When God calls us to do what we're not qualified to do, that's where faith comes in. See, God spoke to David and said, go kill this giant. And David thought he knew he could do it. He went to the king and said, I can do it. But was he qualified? Not really. He had killed a lion and a bear. He had not killed a man with a weapon coming at him who was more than a foot taller than him with a lot of fighting experience. Faith comes into play in our journey when we walk and we accept the challenges God puts in front of us. God calls us to do so many things that are bigger than we are. But let me point out something David did have on his resume. On David's resume, Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt as this ruddy, this red-faced boy was coming at them, said, am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. He cursed David and his God by the names of his gods. Come over here and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. But here's what David had on his resume that not everybody had. David replied to the giant, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. And that's the difference. Be a person. Be that person who says, I will go into the valley. I don't come at you with all the weaponry that you're raising at me. But I come to you in the name of the Lord and in the power of the Lord and in the power of his might. I come to you in the, under the power and anointing of Almighty God. Without the anointing of God, we can't possibly do what we're called to do. Impossible. When you walk into that anointing, <clears throat> and I get to experience it every, every Sunday. Every Sunday I get to experience it in a tangible way. I stand back behind that curtain waiting, praying, seeking God, listening to the choir, enjoying that, thinking, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Should I do this? Should I just leave? Uh, you know, this, this task is bigger than, than me. I can't go out there and present God's word, especially looking like this. What am I going to do? And then you walk out and you begin to pre present the word of God. And the anointing changes. The anointing changes. And the power of God becomes tangible. And you begin to feel it. And it's not just for me, it's for you as well. When you begin to walk in the way that God has called you to walk, when you make decisions as unto God, when you speak to people as unto God, when you give to people as unto God, when you share your testimony and your story, or you make a right decision when you usually make a wrong decision, you begin to feel that anointing, and you begin to believe, yes, I can. Yes, I can. It doesn't look like I can. It didn't feel like I can, but yes, I can. I agree. God challenged me in an enormous way this week. Biggest single faith challenge I've ever experienced in my life. I want to share it with you. 
because I'm, in a sense, almost completely doing it for you as the church that I serve. About three and a half years ago, in our 11 a.m. service, this service, I pointed under God's direction back in this area right here, pointed back into this area to a, a guy who was a young man at that point named Jacob Brown. Some of you will remember that. It was about three and a half years ago. And I, I don't speak to people and give them a word from God from the platform to the seat too often. I've only done it a few times in my life like that. But I knew what I was supposed to tell him, and I said, Jacob, if you will commit yourself. And I was friends with Jacob. We were not real tight, but friends, respected acquaintances, casual friends. So, Jacob, if you will commit yourself to God today, he'll change your life. I said, if it's a yes, I will. Please join me on the platform. And he did. Little did I know that the Saturday before, see, Jacob did a lot of running with the wrong people doing the wrong things. Um, I'll just, a life of violence, crime, hurting things, hurting people. And that was who he was, and that was what he lived, and that's what he wanted to live. But he knew at that moment, and I, I didn't know the Saturday before, that he had been in a situation with a gun at his head in somebody else's hand. And the person pulled the trigger, and the gun didn't fire. So he took off running. Which he told me, he said, that's the first time I've ever run from anybody in my whole life. He's, he's a fighter by nature, raised to be one. Took off running. And did the gun fire after you took off, Jake? The gun fired after he took off, but it didn't hit him because he had made, put some space in between him and the shooter. And so that's the life he lived. That's the life he wanted to live. And part of that life he really enjoyed. But God was calling him that day into full-time ministry. Now, how does God take somebody that's that unqualified? Like me, like you, like him. How does God take somebody that's that unqualified and say, I want you to go represent me? Why does God do that? Why does God do that? When I was a teenager, I was such a clown, it's not even worth talking about. I was. I was a complete fool most of the time. <laughs> Why does God choose people to represent him who aren't qualified? Which is all of us. Which is all of us. But that day on this platform right here, that day on this platform right about here, God was calling him to full-time ministry. Now, this was a man who, was, who had dedicated his life to crime and violence. God was calling him to ministry right here in, a, in our presence. And I felt it, and he felt it. And I made some statements to him. I said, we as a church will make sure this happens for you. We will do what we have to to help and make sure this is fulfilled. Well, three years of Bible college later, Jake, if, if you don't mind, come up here for just, just a minute. I, I wasn't sure I was going to call you up, but I want, I want people to see you. Now, it's, it's been, thank you, thank you so much for, for giving him that kind of respect and reception. It's been kind of great because he played basketball at Bible college, and not everybody looks like Jake from the elbows down in Bible college. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's got a few other tattoos that show up when he has a, when he has a basketball jersey on. 
And, uh, you know, I, I was pretty proud. I was, just let me say, as a Sheffield guy, I was pretty proud to say, that's ours right there. That, that's our boy right there. That's our boy right there. And see, he, everybody can see his. I hide my stuff. Three years of Bible college later, three years of Bible college later, one year left to graduate and be a credentialed minister of the gospel. And go into full-time ministry. More than that is, is the testimony of what he is. Because Jake has been around Sheffield his whole life. See, when I, was, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, everybody in this area of town knew the Brown family, which would have been your grandparents, your grandma. She liked me. I was one of the lucky ones. <laughs> the Browns were the toughest people in this part of town. I've heard that from people who know. This was one tough family. They didn't play. And like I said, your grandmother liked me, and I, still, I, hang, on to that, I hang on to that memory. Because she didn't like too many people. But Jacob is what Sheffield stands for. Jacob is what we're about. He is what we're about. He is what we say we're about. As he's run these streets, these streets that we're on. Well, here's, here's where God steps in. And Jacob, you can stay up here. You can go sit down, whatever your <laughs> pleasure is. Here's where the God piece comes in, and this is where it gets hit the road for me. Jacob has a 12,000 plus remainder on his bill. Classes start this week, and he can't go back. Now, we as, as a church have failed to do our part in this. Because I said under the anointing of God, and, and I know 100% it was God, confirmed so many times, we are supposed to help you do this. Well, we've not done that. And because of this, God is having to speak some different things. And God began to speak to me this week. Because, you know, we don't understand sometimes on the surface how pieces of obedience affect the whole house. It affects the whole house in a huge, huge way. And so God began to speak to me this week. It was Wednesday night. And he said, okay, this is directly tied to the spiritual giant that I've been preaching about the last three Sundays. And God pointedly asked me, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert at anything, and I'm not great at a lot of things, but my whole life I have recognized the voice of God. My mom taught me at an early age how to hear God and how to respond to that, and it was ingrained in me. Uh, I know the voice of God. I don't know much, but I know that. And God began to speak to me again this week, and he said, ask me, because God talks to me in my head. I've never heard a voice. I'd love to. Never heard a voice. I just get, it's just like internal. And God pointedly asked me, are you going to be David in this issue, or are you going to be Saul? Uh, David walks into the anointing. Saul is disobedient and walks away from the anointing. And once that anointing escapes and God pulls it off of you, you don't get it back. You may tarry for a while. Saul was king for eight to ten years after the anointing was taken from him, but he was never again operating under the anointing of God. And he was no longer even the king in God's eyes because a new king had been anointed who was walking into the anointing, not away from the anointing. So God asked me, are you going to walk into the anointing or are you going to walk away from the anointing? 
And I am responsible for God's word and his will being carried out in this house. I'm the pastor of this. I'm not alone, thank God. But I am responsible for making sure God's will and his word are carried out in this house. That is part of my responsibility. It's part of the mantle. And part of the breakthrough of this house that we've been praying for, some of you are tarrying for, we can feel it in the spirit. You can feel it in this service today. You can feel it in both services today. Before I ever got to any sermon, there is a breaking. There is a season that's about to change. And part of it is because so many of you are praying in a new season. There are more people in this church right now praying for this church than I ever recall. I have people every day telling me, I'm praying, I'm praying every day. God has put this on my heart. I'm fasting, I'm travailing, I'm praying for this house. And I know what it's about. Because there's a spirit of freedom that we have got to overcome. There's a spirit, there's a giant that has to be killed. And in this case, this is, a, this is a snapshot of what that is for me. Part of the breakthrough for this house depends on obedience in this issue and my obedience in this issue. I'm not casting this call now on anyone, my obedience for this issue. God spoke to me clearly, confirming what I must do personally to offer obedience in this issue. Saul or David? Am I going to be Saul or David? Am I going to be the one? I stood here two weeks ago and said, I want to be the one. I want to be the one. Who else wants to be the one? And the altar in this service was full all the way up all three aisles. People who said, I want to be the one. If you want to be the one, God will give you the chance. And then you have the decision to make, am I walking into the anointing or out of the anointing? And if you walk out of it, you have made your choice. Now, God is a God of grace and mercy. But when he pulls his anointing from us, you don't see it coming back. So here's what God has called me to do. And I know some of you are moving, and that's an amazing thing. But let me show you what God's calling me to do. There's a sacrifice I must make personally for the breakthrough in this house. And I promise you, there's no desire to be a hero, prove a point. I have prayed through my own issues and my own rebellion on this issue. But there has, something has to happen for a breakthrough in this house. God expects the leader. Let me tell you this, men, women, if you're the leader of your household, if you're the leader of any, any Christian organization, let me tell you, God expects the leader to lead the way in faith, action, and anointing. So here's what God put on my heart. Here's what God put on my heart. If everybody will just freeze where they are, freeze where they are, because it's, it's, it's actually even bigger than this. God put this on my heart. Ron, if you begin to run those slides. That's my, that's my vehicle. That's my vehicle. Here's what God put on my heart, and I didn't even think of this myself. Uh, I usually would, but I guess I didn't for obvious reasons. Here's what we're doing. For each $30 contribution, I'm going to give this away to somebody in this, somebody in this church. For every, now here, and here's how, here's how, this is, God put this together in a very short amount of time. When God speaks, it's, ama it's amazing the, the expediency of which he speaks. And how he says, I want you to do this, 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 this. He told me that Wednesday night, and then I spent all day Thursday arguing with him. <laughs> he told me what, I, what he wanted me to do Wednesday night. And then the crazy thing is, I played that game where you go to, you open the Bible and hope that God speaks to you on that page. <laughs> Anybody ever play that game with God? Okay, I'm just going to open the Bible. You get a kind of a spiritual tone. I'm just going to open the Bible. God, well, just, just speak to me. Speak to me, please. Speak to me, God. I'm going to open, open, open. And nine, 99 times out of 100, it makes no sense. Ezekiel slaughtered 38. What? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Well, I open, I open the Bible because I just needed it. I was that pedagogical, that childish. I needed it. I opened the Bible, and God took me first page. First page, I didn't have to, like, play it again. First page, God said, give, those to, give to those who are in need. 
And when you give, don't expect to get anything back. And then it goes on. It's that passage. You'll, we don't know that part, but then it goes on to say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's that same passage, except I've never heard the first part preached on. And I somehow I skipped over that when I read. But God said that to me and confirmed it several ways. So I argued with God all day Thursday. And, and Annette said, we can't, we, she didn't say we can't. She said, this is the only thing we own that's worth any money. And I said, you are correct. This is, I own that vehicle. I don't make payments on it. This is the only thing we own that's worth any money. And I said, you are correct. And you know what? God, when God asks you to do something, he doesn't ask you to offer up an idol that, that is no sacrifice to you. He asked us to offer up an Isaac, an idol that actually has some value. If God wants sacrifice from us, he doesn't want a pair of shoes in the back of our closet that we know we've retired. He wants the pair we just bought that don't have any creases in them yet. Sorry to make you stand and wait so long, but I want, I want you to hear this and, and think about your motion from there. For each $30 contribution, you'll receive a thank you note from me. Attached to that note is a stub that if you choose, you fill out the contact information, and then you drop the stub into a, to a sealed container that will remain sealed. Two weeks from today, September 8th, two weeks from today, the seal will be removed in your presence. The winning stub will be removed in your presence, and the person that, that wins this must be present. We're going to do it at 1245 p.m., Two weeks from today, 9 o'clock people will either come to this service that day or if they're interested, they'll come back. This was not necessarily an easy decision to make, but God is a big God. My God is a big God. I told you that two weeks ago. I told you that last week. My God is a big God. And I'm not even doing this for me because once I read that verse and it said, when you give, don't expect anything back. I may never see one piece of blessing from this, but I know this is, significant, this is significant for this house. I know there's blessing for this house attached to it because we are attached to Jacob Brown, and we need to follow through with that. And God has spoken to me as the leader and said, you lead the way. You lead the way. You follow through. So we will do that. Now, what I'm asking you to do is partner with me, partner with me, because $30 is a pretty cheap, stinking vehicle. Partner with me, partner with me, and there, there's, there are two tables out in the lobby in this the far left, from my, where I am, the far left area, and just fill that out if you want to participate in this. It's a $30 contribution, and I, get, I gain nothing from this. None of the money comes from me. I gain nothing from this. This is all going to the cause that is before us, and God will be honored. And not just because we love Jacob Brown, because we love a lot of people who need help. You know, everybody has a need. It's not about that. It's not about precedent. It's not about, well, you helped him help my son. It's about God speaking and us responding in obedience to what God said. That's what it's about. It's about God speaking. And when I shared this with Jacob, he said, absolutely not. You can't do that. And then I said, well, what you don't understand is we have to do this because God said it. He didn't want me to do this. He doesn't want me to sell my vehicle. He didn't want attention today. He doesn't want to be put before you as a need. That's not his personality. He's the guy that when you try to give him a dollar bill, he says, no, I'm not taking anything. But God, I told him last night, I said, God wants to show you and reinforce in you his calling. He wants to reinforce in you how much he loves you and his call on your life. And he's going to use me and this house to do it. And there's no better way than for the family of God to raise up the family of God. So I'm asking you to partner with me over the next three weeks, and the, the sooner you do it, the better. There may be a little bit of a line out there. Partner with me, and let's, let's, let's slay this thing. Let's kill this giant. Let's slay it. Let's knock it down. Let's cut its head off. Let's kill this thing. Because it's about obedience in this house. Now, if you want to come to the baskets, you're welcome to. I uh, don't have to. <laughs> I thought that might change a few thoughts. But with this basket, this, this money will go to that as well because I understand that's why you're coming. Amen. We're calling this the David Project. Calling this the David Project. And our God is big. 
and our God is able. I want to read you something. How many of you are familiar with uh, David Wilkerson? David Wilkerson was a true prophet of our generation. He has passed on. He passed on tragically in the last year. David Wilkerson, he was the kind of guy, I was around him a little bit. He's the kind of guy that you prayed real hard for forgiveness of everything before you walked into his presence. Because he would call your sin out in front of whoever was around. He was that kind of a man. He would look at you in front of a group of people or in front of your friends and say, I'm getting ready to read your mail. Would you like to send them out of the room? He was scary. But he spoke as a prophet, as a mouthpiece from God. This is one of the things he wrote in the last several years. Faith is very demanding. It demands that once we hear God's word, we are to obey it with no other evidence to direct us. Did you hear that? When we hear God's word, we are supposed to obey it with no other evidence. It does not matter how big our obstacles may be, how impossible our circumstances, we are to believe his word and act on it. With no other proof to go on, God says, my promise is all you need. And this is for some of you in your own life right now. So, so, so listen to this. Like every generation before us, we also wonder, Lord, why am I faced with this test? It is beyond my comprehension. You've allowed so many things in my life that make no sense. Why is there no explanation for what I'm going through? Why is my soul so troubled, so filled with great trials? Hear me again. The demands of faith are totally unreasonable to humankind. So how does the Lord answer our cries? He sends his word reminding us of his promises, saying, simply obey me. Trust my word to you. He accepts no excuse. No matter how impossible our circumstances may seem, no excuse is adequate. Please do not misunderstand me. Our God is a loving father, and he does not allow his people to suffer for no reason. We know he has at his disposal all power and willingness to make every problem and every heartbreak go away. He can merely speak a word and rid us of every trial and every struggle. Yet the fact is, God will not show us how or when he will fulfill his promises to us. Why? He does not owe us any explanation. When he has already given us the answer, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness in his son. He is all we need for every situation. His truth is all we need Anytime life is thrown at us and God is going to stand on the word he has already revealed. You may have my word within your reach, so rest on my word, believe it and obey it. So the question is in our, in our lives, in my life, in your life, am I going to choose to be Saul and walk out of the anointing or am I going to choose to be David and walk into the anointing? Most of the time when God calls us to do something, we don't really want to do it. You know, I don't, I don't care to give that vehicle away. My son gave a vehicle away a couple months ago. I made fun of him. <laughs> he needs a vehicle, and if I'm going to give that away, I should give it to him. I can't do that because God said, this is what I want you to do. See, when God spells something out, it just, it's like writ, it's written on the inside of your, your heart. And you can't go against it. So now, even if someone were, because I thought about this, what if somebody stands up and says, God has blessed me, I'm going to cover the whole thing right now. I still have to do what God called me to do. I can't, I can't relinquish that just because, you know, the ram in the thicket is not an escape. It's another sacrifice. And so, I'm glad nobody did that. Because I didn't want to have to have to make that decision. But this is something, family, that we have to get done. Because it's significant in the breakthrough in this house. It's significant. Our obedience in the small things determines whether God blesses us in the big things. And that's not just as an individual person. That's as a church. 
That's as a church. That's as, a, as the family of God. Our obedience in the small things determines whether God moves in the big things. And I want big things for this place. I have, I have no other ministry agenda other than, than ministering to Sheffield Family Life Center in Kansas City. No agenda. I'm on a political ladder in this state, but I'm not going any higher because my goals are here. God has called me to Kansas City. God has called me to Sheffield, and that's all I want to do in ministry at this point. And I, but, but that hinges on knowing that there's breakthrough for this house. We've got so many needs, and this is what I've been telling you, and, and just relentlessly uh, badgering you with the last couple of months. There is so much need, and we have to figure out how to get there. We have to figure out how to do it. We have to figure out how to move in faith, even though it doesn't look practical. And I'm trying. God showed me so clearly this week, I have to lead the way so you will know how to do it. I have to lead the way. And you're probably not going to have to give away a car, but you're going to have to do something if you're going to walk in faith. You're going to have to do something. God will call you to something that's not comfortable. He will. Because in order to really follow him and serve him, we have to step outside of ourselves. We have to. We have to. If it's about me, I lose. If it's about him, I win. And I want this house blessed. I want his anointing on this house. I want his anointing on this community through this house. A lighthouse doesn't just stand there and have light to reflect light. A lighthouse guides ships where they're going where to go and where not to go. We are a lighthouse in this community. We are a lighthouse in this community. And let me go back to, to Jacob. Because Sheffield is a lighthouse in this community, that's why he's going into the ministry. That's why he's going into the ministry. That's why his mom sits right back there and is one of the most incredible women you'll find anywhere. One of the most selfless, servant-hearted people on the planet. Because this is a lighthouse to this community. But we have to get brighter. We have to get brighter. And you don't do that by waiting for the bulb to charge itself up. We've got to pray. We've got to be hungry. We've got to be passionate about God and what he wants to do in this house and this community. We have to be passionate about it. The energy you had today, we need to come to church with this energy every, one, every Sunday. We need to go out in, in the streets every day, every, wherever you go. You need to go out in the streets and in the places of work and in your schools with this same passion. I'm going to be a world changer. I may fall and, and mess myself up, but I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be a world changer. I'm going to make a difference. With what we have in this room, we could shake this city. Shake this city. And you know what? That's, that sounds so trite, and I get so sick of my, hearing myself say those things, but God has called us to do it. God has called us to make a difference, a bigger difference. It's going to take faith. It's going to take faith, and I'm no different than you. If I can step out on thin ice and know that God's got me, you can too. We can walk it together, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm not, I'm not asking you to pray about what God wants you to give away or do. That's, that's, not even, that's not even the issue. It's about, God, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to sacrifice to kill the giants that stand in front of me? What do I need to do? Stand with me, if you would, all over the auditorium. Thank you for listening to this plea today. Testimony in the context of a message. And like I told you last week, and I'm dedicated to it, I'm preaching every service like it's the last one I'll ever preach. So if, so if, I, if I get run over by a Hummer this week, <laughs> you will know when you hear about it that I delivered the word to you I was supposed to deliver. Absolutely. Undoubtedly, in this crowd, some of you, uh, that element of faith is not really part of your, your life, not part of who you are, because your relationship with God is not what it's supposed to be. How do we have a relationship with God? How do we increase our faith? Well, first of all, we have to accept the sacrifice 
of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have to accept the sacrifice of his life for the forgiveness of our sins. And you say, well, that's kind of ethereal. And No, it's, it's eternal is what that is. And that whole piece of believing and confessing and saying, yeah, I, I received the forgiveness for my sins. And the only way to God the Father is through Jesus' Son. I want to give you an opportunity just to, just to pray. Pray a prayer with me. I'd love to have you come forward this morning, but with the, the time, I know you're getting anxious to go now that you're standing. But I want to pray a prayer with you. Say, my heart's not right with God, and I need my heart made right with God. I understand that. I need faith in my life. I, I need faith in God. I need a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I understand that. It's not about joining this church. It's not about talking, looking, acting like us or me. It's, it's about a personal relationship with God that you have. It's, uh, God is calling you to that first, and then he calls you to more adventurous things on the journey. They say, I need to pray that prayer with you, Pastor. My, my heart's not right with God. I need, I need restoration in my heart. I need forgiveness of my sins. I need heart restored. I need, uh, I need to be born again. I need life in Christ this morning. I need that relationship. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand where you are and put it back down. You say, that's me. I need that. I need to pray that with you. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else? Yeah, I need to pray that way. There's, there is a, a piece of action that has to go with faith to produce in the Spirit. And that equation may not make sense to you, but it's, it's biblical and it's real. So you say, anybody else, before we pray, say, I, I need that in my life. Thank you. I need that in my life. Thank you. Pray this with me, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you to forgive my sins. Change my heart. Change my mind. Change my direction. I receive the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. I choose to be a follower of Christ today. I commit myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, get around godly people to grow. We will be having church again next Sunday. I already know what I'm preaching, and I'm moderately excited about it already. Uh, the choir will be singing again. It's, uh, it's going to be a great day. So be here next Sunday. If you're willing to partner with me with this, uh, with this venture, there's a, a, the tables are over in the lobby to my left, the east lobby area where the floor is kind of tiled. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for your heart. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Thank you for allowing me to be representative of what God wants to do in this house. And thank you for being willing to, to follow me as a church body. And thank you for exiting while I'm talking. God bless you. Have a great day.